So, what do lasers and billiards have in common? First, of course, laser obstacle lightsaber pool. And second, less importantly, the law of reflection. The law of reflection says fairly simply that when a wave hits a boundary and reflects off, it will reflect at the same angle that it hit the boundary at. The angle that it hits at we call the angle of incidence, the angle it reflects at is the angle of reflection, and by convention we measure both of those angles not from the surface itself, but from a line perpendicular to that surface called the normal. The law of reflection isn't unique to lasers or light waves or mirrors or anything like this. It applies equally well to all waves hitting all different surfaces, sound waves and water waves and surfaces like, uh, like say a wall, sound wave hitting a wall, so we get reflections off the wall. The laser gives us a nice visual, but it applies to all different wave types. The geometry may feel pretty familiar here. It turns out that a number of familiar objects move in a very similar way to this. Here we see that a pool ball bouncing off the wall of the table follows exactly the same path as a laser obeying the law of reflection. A mirror is an extremely flat surface, so each part of the laser beam hits at exactly the same angle, and therefore reflects at the same angle too. On a bumpier surface, like your clothes or a wall, the angle of incidence varies based on what part of the surface the beam hits. The angle of incidence and angle of reflection are always measured relative to the mirror. Now if the orientation of the mirror changes, that complicates things a bit and we need to be careful of that. Here we see by rotating the mirror 45 degrees, we end up shifting the angle of the reflected laser by 90 degrees. We still have the law of reflection at work here. We can see that there's a 45 degree angle between the normal line and the incident ray, and a 45 degree angle between the normal line and the reflected ray. But the reflected ray is not going off at a 45 degree angle relative to how it started. In my Cavendish experiment, I'll be using a system like this to determine the angular position of the two arms of the apparatus. We'll need to keep in mind that whatever angle measurement we get for the laser is actually double the angular shift of the arm. Thanks very much for watching this, folks. If you learned something, I'd ask you to take a moment to like and even subscribe if you think you want to see more of these. I've got more videos like this one and some life hacks coming up and more Cavendish videos coming up, so it should be a good run coming up here. Thank you very much.